What's up, Fossil Fam? It's your boy, Lucifer, everybody's favorite blue raccoon. And today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my nonfiction November TBR. Normally, if I make a TBR video, it's because I'm participating in a readathon or it's a quarterly TBR. Like, these are the books I want to read during the winter, these are the books I want to read during the autumn, like that kind of thing. But today, I'm just talking about the books that I want to read in November. And my ultimate goal would obviously be to read all five of these, but if I'm being truthful, I'll probably only read like one or two of them because I'm a slow reader and I just don't read a lot. But I'm hoping that by doing Nonfiction November, I'll get some of these books knocked off my TBR and it might help me find my love for reading again because I've kind of lost it over the past couple years. So the first book I want to talk about is an ebook, and that is this book. I do not personally feel comfortable saying the title because of obvious reasons. People that look like me use that word to degrade black people and I find that disgusting and reprehensible. So I'm not going to say the title, but it is N-word with a hard R and it's an autobiography written by Dick Gregory. I am very interested in this book. I saw it was on sale on Google Play for like less than five bucks and I was like, well shit, I can afford that. So I bought it and I don't know who Dick Gregory is, but I'm so excited to find out who he is and learn more about him and his life growing up because I love memoirs and I love autobiographies and just biographies in general. Like I love learning about people's lives and their backstories and their character development, if you will. So I'm very excited to read this book. The next book that I have is called Not My Father's Son and it is by Alan Cumming. I adore Alan Cumming. So Alan Cumming is probably best known by people my age as Floop from uh, Spy Kids. It's a cruel, cruel world, all you little boys and girls, and some mean, nasty people want to have you for their supper. But if you follow me, you can all be free, free, you can all be free. As a bird on a big TV, if you dream, if you dream, if you dream, my dream. But... Um, yeah, I adore Alan Cumming as a person. I think the first movie I ever saw him in was probably X2, X-Men United, I think. Um, but yeah, I think that was the first movie that I probably saw him in. He was Nightcrawler. And I have had a crush on Nightcrawler and also on Alan Cumming ever since. So that's how that works. I am really excited to read this. I know that Alan is queer. I know that he is bisexual and he's been with his male partner for ever and I just I don't know. It's oh my god. I'm just so excited to read this and learn more about him and how he grew up and I have actually started reading this a little bit kind of like I read the first couple pages and then I put it down and didn't pick it up again so I'm gonna obviously reread the first couple pages but from what I read already he definitely didn't grow up in the most accepting environment and I'm very interested to learn more about how he grew up and how he came to terms with who he is and all that because he appears to be a man that is very comfortable in his skin now but growing up in an environment like that, I imagine probably wasn't the best for him. So yeah, I'm very excited to read this. And it is a signed copy. Hey there. So last memoir slash autobiography that I have on my TBR is by my man's Craig Ferguson, and it's called Riding the Elephant, a memoir of altercations, humiliations, hallucinations, and observations. This was actually a Christmas present from my aunt, like last year or the year before that, I think. I first came across Craig Ferguson. Uh, I've always had trouble sleeping at night. I just, I can't fucking sleep. I've always had trouble with it. And in high school, I had cable in my room. Um, just basic stuff. So, you know, I, I would flip through the channels and, you know, find something to watch. But, like, I didn't have, like, the TV guide or anything like that. It was just basic stuff. Um, and I was flipping through the channels, and I found his late night show. What was it? Like, Late Late Night with Craig Ferguson or something like that? Uh, but, yeah, I saw his show with him, obviously. And his robot, Jeff, and the horse secretariat and all that good stuff and I loved that they would bleep his like swears with little flags and like cracky dingo and like stuff like that like I live for that I loved his show so much 
Um, but obviously, you know, he doesn't do a show anymore. And now he's on to Greener Pastures, I guess. I have watched two of his comedy specials. I think I think he's had two of them. And I've watched both of them. So I just really like Craig Ferguson's comedy. I like his humor. And he's been honest and open about the fact that he has struggled with addiction and alcoholism and stuff in his life. And I find that very interesting. And it's just, I'm interested because, I mean, both of these men grew up not in the U.S. And I just love learning about people that didn't grow up where I grew up or they grew up like in different areas of, you know, the U.S. or whatever, because I grew up in the northern U.S., uh, sp specifically the Midwest. So people like that grew up on the coast didn't grow up the same way that I grew up in the Midwest, obviously. But yeah, I love learning more about people's experiences and stuff growing up. And Craigie Ferguson, Craigie Ferg, has always been someone that I just vibed with, I guess, his humor and everything and his just honesty and everything. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this book finally. The last two books I want to talk about are about World War II, specifically Nazi Germany, and even more specifically, the concentration camp Auschwitz. So the first book that I want to talk about is called Auschwitz, A Doctor's Eyewitness Account. And I feel very bad because I know that I'm not going to be pronouncing his name correctly, most likely, but I tried Googling it to figure out how to pronounce it, and literally nothing came up other than, like, one other video where somebody was reviewing this book. She struggled with it probably just as much as I'm going to. But the doctor's name is Dr. Miklos Nisli, and he was a Hungarian Jew, and he was taken to Auschwitz along with his family, and Josef Mengele noticed his medical skills, and he made Dr. Nisli, like, work under him. So this is his eyewitness account of the atrocities that happened at Auschwitz while working as a doctor, right under Josef Mengele. I'm assuming that this book definitely goes more into depth about different experiments and stuff and obviously it's going to talk about his experience as a prisoner in the concentration camps and then it will obviously also talk about him being a doctor under Josef Mengele but yeah I'm very interested to read this and I don't expect myself to finish this this month I this is just going to be a very emotionally taxing, and apparently a lot of people younger than me, like a lot of Gen Zers, don't even know what the fucking Holocaust was, and that's how you end up with TikTok trends, like, you know, pretending to be a Holocaust victim, or pretending to be someone that died in the 9-11 attacks. Those are both TikTok trends. That's why I stay the fuck away from TikTok. Like, I just, I'm not interested. But, yeah, I'm very... I, I do want to learn more about what happened, especially an actual eyewitness account. I'm very curious, and I know it's going to be very hard to read, and it's going to be very emotionally taxing, but I am excited to read it nonetheless. And this last book that I have is called The Man That Broke Into Auschwitz, and this is about a British soldier who actually, like, he was being held as a prisoner of war in a camp, like, right next to Auschwitz according to this little blurb. So I just want to read, like, the beginning of um, the little blurb for you guys. It says, Dennis Avey enlisted with the British Rifle Brigade in 1939, not out of any patriotic pride, but for the sheer adventure of it. Adventure was what he got. Five years later, in the summer of 1944, he was being held in an Allied prisoner of war labor camp, E-715, adjacent to the site of Auschwitz III. He had heard of the brutal treatment of the prisoners there and determined to bear witness to it, risky though it would be, with a view to reporting it to the world after the war. Exchanging uniforms with a Jewish inmate and bribing an SS guard, A.V. smuggled himself into the concentration camp and experienced firsthand the cruelty against slave workers who had been sentenced to death through labor. Completely voluntarily, A.V. had traded his status as a protected British POW to enter a place where hope and humanity had been vanquished and the life of a human hung by a thread. So I'm very interested in reading this as well because this is going to be from a different perspective. 
This book is written by a doctor that worked right under Yosef Mengele, is written by someone that snuck into Auschwitz just to see the horrors of it. So it's going to be very interesting to see like if there are any discrepancies between these or you know just the differences that they saw based on their positions. So yeah, I'm very interested to read those. And those are the five books that I want to read during the month of November. I am hoping to at least read two of them, but I would be more than happy to read all five of them. And also I want to finish Savvy's book, The Makings of a Small Town Beauty King, but that's not nonfiction. So yeah. Anyway, you guys know what to do by now. You can scratch that like button, claw that subscribe button, and roar at me in the comments, and I will see you dinos in the next video. I've gotten so much done, it's unreasonable.